Hi everybody, welcome to Sunday. It's a special, a special matinee. Hello everybody, we are live on YouTube and Facebook. So excited, my name is Champion Fulton, this is Stephen Fulton, and we're so happy to be here for the very first New Jersey Jazz Society social. So as everybody gets logged on, I'm gonna chat a little bit. Um, we were supposed to be at Shanghai Jazz today for uh, the New Jersey Jazz Society June Social, and I'm so glad that they've agreed to reschedule us here. I'm just going to go ahead and actually, I've got my computer right here. I'm going to go ahead and share this video to my own page before we get started. Um, and I would encourage you guys to do the same. If you're just tuning in, please share it so that your friends can join us. It's just taking a second to load. <laughs> Let me get it going here. And if you're on Facebook, please say hi to me. And you can also comment um, and say hi on YouTube, and I'll be able to see that. And that's part of what makes this so much fun. Hi, Gilead. Nice to see you guys. How are you in Rio de Janeiro? I see Susan Fulton on Facebook. And I'm really excited to share with you guys that I'm actually on the cover of the New Jersey Jazz Society magazine this month. It's really a beautiful cover. Um, and it comes out in July. And I will be sharing it, but we want to make sure that all the members see it first uh, before I share it. So please share this video and say hi. I'd love to know where you're watching from. I'm thinking we're going to have a lot of people from New Jersey on here today. Um, so tell me where in New Jersey we really miss playing there. Actually, this weekend I was supposed to play in Metuchen, and then of course supposed to be with you guys in Madison at Shanghai Jazz, but we're happy to be here right now. I have some questions I'm going to be answering from Vice President of Music Programming, Mitchell Seidel, as we go along, and we're going to play some music and talk about jazz and talk to you. So say hi.
for someone just exactly like you. She meant me. She meant me for someone exactly like you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in if you're just joining us. I actually see that um, we've got a little bit, sometimes when I'm streaming on Facebook on another account, like I'm live today from New Jersey Jazz Society, sometimes you get a little bit of a glitch and I can't see the comments, but that's okay. That's why I've got the computer here. So I'm just going to pull you guys up on the computer and watch the comments and see what you guys are saying. Because I see we've got about We've got about 20 people on YouTube, which is fantastic. Hi, if you guys are watching, please say hi. Tell me where you're watching from. Um, I think some people watch. Gilead says he loves the detail of Steven's tie matching my dress. We're very yellow today. I've really been wanting to um, wear matching headbands as well. <laughs> so I'm very, very colorful because it's summer. Okay, here we go. I think. I'm trying to get the comments. Um, but you guys can talk to each other. Oh, I see a lot of international people on there today. Hi, Rafa in Barcelona. Hi, Sydney. Nice to see you. We are um, trying to get this going. Sorry about that. Actually, we've been live streaming a lot. This is our 12th week. We go live every Sunday at 5 o'clock on my page. Um, and... This is our 12th week doing it, but Facebook sometimes is a little bit glitchy and makes it a little bit hard to see everything. Oh, we have people in Montreal. Hi, nice to see you. Ams Richard in the OC, I'm assuming Orange County. Hi, Harry. Hi, Stephen in London, Ontario in Canada. Nice to see you. Um, so just getting this pulled up, getting this all together, and you guys can talk to each other. Oh, Harry's in Tennessee. That's great. <laughs> so as I was saying before, we're really happy to be here because we were supposed to be. Um, we were supposed to be at Shanghai Jazz for the June social for the New Jersey Jazz Society. I'm so glad that they've decided to go online with their event so that you guys can see each other and you can chat to each other actually in the Facebook app and say hi. And if you're interested, if you're not a member and you're interested in becoming a member, I put a link in the text box here to their site, which is, I think, njjs.org, and you can find out about being a member there. Um, it's really great because they publish this beautiful Jersey Jazz magazine, which is really informative and nice. It's in color. And I'm actually the cover girl this month on the new issue, which comes out July 1st. It's really pretty, and I can't wait for you guys to see it. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more now that I think we've got everything going. Um, Mark is asking, is this earlier than usual today? This is a special matinee. I am going to be live again at regular time, which is 5 o'clock on my page. Uh, but this is a special matinee for the New Jersey Jazz Society. Uh, so we have a double header. So um, let's play some more songs. Let's play... <laughs> Bubbles, bangles, hear how they jing jing a lingle. Bubbles, bangles, bright shiny beads, sparkles, spangles, my heart will sing, sing a lingle. Wearing bangles and beads, I just glitter and gleam so. Thank you. 
by me. Ah, ring, ring a ling. I've heard that's where it lives. Bubbles, man, no sparkles and spangles and beads, loads above bubbles. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody. So we've got about 25 people over here on YouTube. That's great. Good to see you. Hi Pete. I saw you comment. I've been trying to um, not read the comments too much while I'm live because it gets a, I get a little bit um, distracted. That's happening right now. <laughs> Hi Jennifer. I see Jennifer's on there and Richard, Mark. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. So um, we did have some questions, like I said, from the Vice President of Music Programming for the New Jersey Jazz Society. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, this is not my first online performance. I think you guys know, like I said, we've been live streaming now for 12 weeks, um, which we started pretty quickly when the pandemic began. Um, I don't really know how to explain it other than to say I've always been a really big fan of Facebook Live. and. I thought this was a great opportunity since all of my tours and in-person or IRL in real life gigs were canceled, uh, that it would be not easy, but a good way to stay in touch with people by going online. So we started doing these Sundays live from lockdown very early in uh, March. And we were very, I think, a bit lucky that we started early because we were able to get some technology, <laughs> I think. I just as I said that, I jinxed myself, didn't I? <laughs> uh, we were able to get some technology that uh, helps us have a good live stream, like these microphones. Steven, do you see that screen there? What is that? That's YouTube. YouTube. Huh. Just... We're having a little bit of maybe a technical difficulty. Um, looks like the YouTube screen might have just dropped out. So I'm just going to take a look at the C. Oh, there it is what that was about. That was weird. Hi, everybody. Did they see that? <laughs> I don't know. Did you guys see that sort of um, pink. pink static? Uh, but it's gone now. It appears gone. Oh, hi, Peter in Washington Crossing, Pennsylvania. Oh, Mary's in Iowa. Nice to see you guys. Um, I don't know what ha they Yes, they did see it, and I don't know what happened. That has never happened before. Thanks, Jackie and Mike. Um, I don't know. So we're, uh, let me tell you a little bit about the setup if it's, if it's interesting to you guys. We're live streaming from uh, two iPhones and we have these really great Shure microphones that connect uh, to give a good sound. Um, I will say YouTube has been more glitchy for us. Yes. Um, in general, more than Facebook. But I think we fixed that problem. We're all good and we're, <laughs> we're really happy to be here with you guys today. We're going to continue with a tune. Uh, I've been singing for a really long time, talk a little bit about my history as a jazz musician. This is one of the very first songs I ever sang in public, um, and we do it all kinds of different ways in my band, different tempos, but I feel like doing it this way today uh, because I've been listening to a lot of Louis Armstrong, because I think Louis Armstrong's music is very uplifting and cheerful and happy, and this is how he does this song. <laughs>
Sunshine and flowers If you want the things you love You must have showers So when you hear a thunder
under. here a little bit. Oh, thanks. Everybody likes the yellow. Um, actually, I busted out some of my summer clothes now that it's finally officially hot here. And I don't know if you can hear I have on I have on new shoes. I'm trying not to make too much noise with my high heels on the on the floor, even though you can't see them. I like to be all the way dressed up. Um, so that was Pennies from Heaven. And I said we've been listening or I've been listening to a lot of Louis Armstrong lately. And I think one of the best things, um, well, Everything about Louis Armstrong is great, but he plays so many great songs. Um, and we're going to continue with another one right now. This is uh, Sometimes I'm Happy.
I'm happy. So, um, thanks, Lawrence. Hi. <laughs> Lacey. Lacey says he wants to borrow my, my left hand. I've been working on that a lot, um, especially since the, the pandemic, because I miss my band, not playing with my bass and drums we're, um, since we're socially distancing. Uh, so it's been a good opportunity to work on my stride and uh, my sort of Errol Garner yeah, Mark says the Errol Garner. That's right. Work on kind of the Errol Garner um, left hand. Thanks, Leslie. Um, so I've been a jazz musician for a long time. and talk a little bit about myself here. And uh, one of my first gigs was actually Clark Terry's 75th birthday party, uh, which was, wait, was that 1995? Yes. Yeah, 1995. Clark's born in 1920. Um, so, wait. Yeah, yeah yes. of course. I don't know why I, I can, I'm like totally confused with numbers today. Um, 95. That was 1995, so I was, I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret, uh, that I was 10. So now you know how old I am. And um, I knew Clark because of you. Why don't you talk a little bit about Clark for a second, and I'll get this picture down. Well, Clark was, uh, of course, a legendary jazz trumpet player, Ellington alumni, and Basie alumni. And uh, he, was a, he was a friend of mine since the late 70s, whenever I uh, bothered him so much in those days that he finally <laughs> decided he would just become my friend. And uh, we remained friends all the way until he died. And uh, I worked for him a lot, traveled with him. We actually lived together for a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was uh, my musical mentor and, and uh, a good friend. And, uh, of course, Champion and Susan both knew him. And he was very interested in Champion, and especially when she became very interested in jazz. He got real interested in her. Well, he always, I think, he liked kids. And yeah. I was a, I was a kid, and I, it was sort of like, um, you know, grandfather to me. And I would send little drawings and photos, because he was always traveling. And we would, uh, I mean, I remember you would talk to him in hotel rooms and, you know, stay in touch. And I wanted to be a jazz musician because every time I saw you guys together, or we saw Clark, and we saw Clark with Joe Williams, and we saw all kinds of people, it was so much fun. And I just wanted to be a part of it. I was going to show you guys this photo. This is actually around that time. This is on my wall. I just took it off my wall. I'm going to show it to Facebook, and then I'll come over to YouTube. That's me there, and that's Clark. Um, and that's my little jazz band that I had. We're all under the age of 12 there. I'm going to get closer to YouTube. Um, sorry, there's a little bit of a glare. And this was the, the band I had in the 90s. We were living in Iowa. And um, I just noticed clips in the background there. Um, we played Clark's tunes. And I, sh I mean, it was my band, but you were running it. Well, you were. I mean, because we were all like children, so. <laughs> you know, we'd rehearse us, and um, we played a couple times with Clark. This actually was a very memorable time because this was around Christmas. This was the Jingle Bells mm -hmm. gig. We played Jingle Bells, Pains from Heaven, and um, Clark was really supportive of me, and um, I think, you know, because of Stephen, and so for his birthday party, which he sort of loved to throw parties, and he kind of liked to organize parties. He wanted to um, have us play. So he asked me and my band if we would play. 
and we played at the beginning of that party. Uh, I don't remember, but it must have been maybe half an hour or, you know, about about like that. That's right. And um, he sat there and with the other party goers and listened, and it was, it was really... Um, actually, I remember it being very fun. I don't remember it being very stressful, but I did used to get super nervous back then because um, I was not quite 10. So... I must have been nervous. I don't remember. Um, but afterwards, that was my first paying gig. So Clark paid me, and I was the leader of the band. Um, and I remember how he paid me. I remember how much he paid me. So each side man got $50. And Clark always had, um, I don't know if you knew Clark or if you saw him, but he carried his money in his cash. He liked to carry cash in kind of like a money brick. A wad or whatever. Yeah, a wad. And he would wad it all together and... And he would uh, wrap it in rubber bands. And so he had $50 bills for each of the guys. That's four of them. And he laid them all out. Um, this was at our house. And I remember the table he used to put the money on top was my Barbie dollhouse, uh, which had a working elevator in it. And uh, he put the money on top of there. And then uh, because I was the band leader, he gave me what he thinks a, a band leader should make double. He did this privately. Yeah, well, it's, it's not private now because I'm not. No, but he you took you into another room. <laughs> yeah, he paid me, and he was, no. you know, teaching me about paying the band, and he um, gave me a hundred dollar bill because I was the band leader. You know, Lacey is watching this video, and wasn't Lacey there? Probably. Lacey, weren't you at the party um, at the school? I think you were. Um, in the basement. We, this was at, in Iowa because Stephen was running the Clark Terry Institute of Jazz Studies, and one of the students from there, Lacey, is actually watching us on Facebook. I think. Um, so, anyway, that's how I got paid, and that was my very first paying gig. And I think I promptly took the money uh, and paid my band, and then I think I just gave you the $100. Yes, that's right. Because yeah. I didn't know really um, what to do with $100. Uh, so that's sort of how I got started as a musician, and I just really loved it. And for a while, oh, hi, Sid. Sid's in Hackensack Hills. Um, for a while... I played trumpet as well, because you guys really wanted me to play trumpet. Mm -hmm. And I, I played trumpet, and I, I tried the drums, and I tried the bass, um, but I really love to sing. I think all little kids really like singing. And I thought if I played piano, then I could sing and play at the same time, and I could also... It's a good, it's a good instrument to be the leader, the leader from the piano, so that's why I wanted to do it. And just looking at the comments over here, that's what I keep looking at. Um, hi, Gloria! Hi, Adrian. We should also say you were jazz, uh, you were all state jazz trumpet in Oklahoma. That's true. I'm from Oklahoma. I mean, this was in Iowa, and then we moved to Oklahoma after that. And um, I did, I played the Vivaldi trumpet concerto too. Mm -hmm. um, that was a lot of fun. It was a very long time ago. Actually, that's my trumpet from high school. This is my Shilky trumpet from high school that I miss. I should play. Yeah, you want to play? No. The thing about the trumpet is very hard, and um, I think, I don't know, what is the quote from Dizzy? Oh, uh, Dizzy said a lot of things about the trumpet. Basically, he said you'll practice your whole life, mm -hmm. work work on it, work on it, work on it, <laughs> and then you'll die, and the trumpet will have won. <laughs> it's a battle, you know. Yeah. So, um, I like the piano. <laughs> I don't think Lacey was there because he said he, that he came the next semester. I'm looking at that. Oh, is that the year before Lacey? Um, but, you know, let's feature the trumpet, Stephen. What do you want to okay. play? How about a little?
Perdido was Clark Terry's featured number, one of his featured numbers, on the Duke Ellington Orchestra. Uh, it was quite, uh, actually quite famous rendition that played on many jukeboxes, mm -hmm. and it featured Clark uh, playing the solo and trading, and uh, he became very fond of the song, and after he left Duke, went into the uh, studios in New York and on through his career. He always played Perdido. It was always one of his favorite tunes. And that little version we played was very similar to the versions that he played in, in later years. Uh, just a little rhythmic way he had of playing Perdido. And ending on the... He loved the, the flatted fifth. Uh, in, in the Duke Ellington band, it was sort of interesting because there was a, uh, a little bit of a dichotomy... Um, mostly viewed from the outside, that in the band there were a great many traditionalists who sort of played in the style of Louis Armstrong or uh, in, the, in the older styles of the music, not only on the trumpet section, but all throughout the band. They, they played in the older styles. And in the 50s, Duke made a little bit of a change, and he began to see that the, the, the more modern music, which was bebop at the time, uh, was becoming very popular, and there were a lot of great musicians who played in that fashion. So Duke began to hire some of these players and put them in key positions in his band. So the band became a real balance mm -hmm. of the, the older style and the newer style, and Clark Terry was one of the newer players in the 50s who was fond of the bebop. Clark idolized um, Louis Armstrong, but also idolized Dizzy Gillespie, and and uh, the, the great beboppers. So that's an interesting uh, side about the band at the time in the 50s when Clark was there, which Clark was in the Duke Ellington band most all of the 50s. Yeah. So. And it's interesting, um, Clark was born in 1920. This is his centennial this year. 100, We yes. haven't been talking about that a lot, but it's true. Um, let's, play another, let's play another Ellington song. This is... Um, from the band before Clark was in it, this was originally Ben Webster's feature in the Blanton Webster years, and this is called All Too Soon. Oh, 
the moment you much. That was uh, Duke Ellington's All, All Too Soon. Oh, Harry really liked that. <laughs> Hi, Barbara. 
Hi, Nielsen. Oh, in Ireland. That's great. There are so many um, really fantastic Ben Webster videos on YouTube. Uh, Leslie mentioned how much she liked Ben Webster. Uh, what was that one we were watching? Oscar with, Peterson and Ben Webster. Yeah, with Oscar. And I think NHOP was on base. And it was um, right before Ben Webster uh, passed away. So yeah, like A year before. Yeah, you know, 76. Or it's a great video. Something like that. It's really good. Um, I've been watching tons of jazz YouTube videos because I miss being able to go out to the clubs for sure. Um, so I want to tell you guys a little bit about what I've been up to during this pandemic lockdown. And uh, you know if you follow me on Facebook that I've been live streaming every Sunday for 12 weeks in addition to doing some other live streams like the one we're doing right now. And actually uh, this weekend we had four um, online performances. I was really um, felt very honored yesterday to be included in Will Friedwald's monthly uh, Zoom event where we talk about uh, American Songbook. And on Friday we did a special edition of Live from Lockdown, a Friday night edition. So we've been doing a lot of online things, online interviews, I've been doing some online teaching, and uh, we're certainly hoping to get back to our in real life performances, especially coming up this summer. We're supposed to be at Birdland uh, in New York City on August 12th and 13th, and that is supposed to be a CD release party for my new record, which is called Bird Song. And it's called Bird Song because it features the music of Charlie Parker. This year is also Charlie Parker's centennial. And uh, it features Scott Hamilton on tenor saxophone, which is really exciting um, because I think uh, so many fans of Scott here in the States, but he doesn't release a lot of domestic records and he doesn't come and tour a lot in the United States, so really happy to be releasing this. And that release date is August 28th. I'm gonna be talking a lot more about it. Um, and I post every Friday on my blog, um, talking about my records and upcoming projects. So if you guys wanna check that out, um, you can find that link on my website or it's championfulton.wordpress.com. And I really wanna thank New Jersey Jazz Society for hosting us today. And this is the very first online social, so please give them feedback. Let, let them know how much you enjoyed it. If you are a member, uh, you're going to see me on the cover of the magazine coming out on, in July. And if you're not a member, you can become one at njjs.org, which the link is in the box somewhere. Um, or you could also just donate to them via their PayPal. And I think it's really wonderful that they're keeping... Uh, music going and keeping musicians performing online on their Facebook page and um, their YouTube. Oh, we're on my YouTube channel, but also on YouTube today. <laughs> um, so it's really wonderful. I want to thank them. And please stay in touch with them. Make sure you like their Facebook page and say that you want to be notified when they go live. We're going to do a couple more tunes before we have to um, log off. Stephen, we haven't played fast. Would you like to play something okay. fast? Another Duke Ellington? Yes. I don't know what it's going to be. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, this is really a, this is a song that um, I didn't talk a lot about. Oh, we had this weird thing on YouTube again. Hold on. I don't know what's going on with that today. Sorry, guys. Um, this is a tune that Stephen and I played. Uh, I wrote a blog about this just a few weeks ago. We played this with Jimmy Cobb and Frank West um, back and when I was a freshman in college here in New York. And this is Cottontail.
Longdale. Thank you guys very much. <laughs> Lacey loves it. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Giannis. Thank you. I saw some YouTube comments on there. Um, they went by really fast while we were playing, so I missed them. But I just want to say thank you one more time. We're going to do a little quick bit of bubbles here just because um, I like to uh, close with something like that. But thank you so much. Thanks to Sydney for having us, New Jersey Jazz Society. Thanks to Sanford Josephson. He wrote this great interview that's going to be in the magazine the next issue. So I really hope that you guys have become a member and you get to read it. And I'll be sharing the cover online sometime in July. I really hope that everyone is doing well, staying healthy, staying safe. It's summertime now, so hope that you're able to enjoy some sunshine. And um, on behalf of the Board of Directors of the New Jersey Jazz Society and us, please stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you guys. Basically, if you'd like to spend the whole afternoon with us, we will be live again at 5 o'clock, which is just a little bit under an hour on my page. If you'd like to go over there and join us, um, it's just like a real gig. Between 4 and 5, you can have a snack and join us again. So I really hope you're well. Thank you, and um, I'm forever blowing bubbles, bubbles in the air. They fly so high, nearly reach the sky. Then, like my dreams, they fade and die. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you again really soon.